Dear friends, this world is a place where people's origins are evidently different, but so are their circumstances. Some are born rich, some are born poor, some are born under the shade of both parents, and some are orphaned at birth. In Eastern tradition, an orphan is called a child who has a deceased father. This is all by the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, not a soul cast out in this world is deprived of Allah's mercy. For every human being, there are numerous blessings and good fortunes, but it is up to the person whether they try and make themselves worthy of these bounties. They can also be ungrateful to the Lord of the universe, which will result in the deprivation of Allah Almighty's mercy and abundance. The latter choice will lead them to an unsuccessful life. Allah has provided mankind with several opportunities in order to make their lives filled with blessings and prosperity. We have the ability to perform well in these situations, which means making ourselves deserving of Allah's blessing and mercy. Allah Almighty has portrayed the life of Prophet Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alaihi wasallam in such clarity that if a person wishes they can learn everything from it by studying about the events and circumstances of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam's life a person could attempt to successfully utilize all of their capabilities when a person tries to improve themselves in all of their lives aspects and the lord of both worlds makes it easier for them the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam's life from the beginning to the end is remarkable guidance and paves way for eminent code of conduct for all human beings dear children the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam's life began without the shade of a father before the birth of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam his father Abdullah radiyallahu anhu passed away. He went to Medina for trade purposes, but during the journey he got ill. He was sent to Medina and during his treatment he departed this world. So only a few months before the birth of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, his father had died. When the news reached Mecca, Prophet Muhammad's mother Bibi Amna radiyallahu anha suffered a major breakdown. Bibi Amna had narrated that she wasn't even able to see her husband the last time before his burial. She started feeling very depressed. She narrated that one night she was sitting in sorrow when out of nowhere a group of women approached her. They said, "Oh Amina, don't be sad. The child you'll bear will be a guiding light for all future mankind." Bibi Amna radiyallahu anha recounts that sometimes she observed a blinding light which helped her see things clearly from far away after viewing those things she felt the heaviness of her heart lessen and experienced peace and tranquility so children then one day a child was born in mecca the child's face was illuminating his face was also emitting rays of light which are called nur when prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam's grandfather Abdul Muttalib radiyallahu anhu saw his grandson he became extremely happy he took him in his lap and was very affectionate towards him he then said his name should be as illuminating as he is then he named his beloved grandson Muhammad which meant the one who is praised a lot Allah had sent the last prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as a role model for this world Therefore his name was coined in reference to his noble mission so that people would be drawn towards him Allah had crafted Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam's appearance in a manner that brought peace and tranquility to anyone who saw him There was a custom among the Arabs they used to send the city's infants to the foster mothers of the desert The reason behind this practice was to raise the children during their early years in the desert's open spaces and fresh air for a healthier upbringing the women who had raised the infants mostly wished for a rich family's child then they would be handsomely rewarded for fostering the child during the year of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam's birth many foster women came to mecca and all of them picked infants belonging to wealthy families in the end 
Bibi Amna Radiatala and her beloved son, an orphan child, was left. A midwife and a foster mother by the name of Halima Sadia Radiatala and her arrived late to Mecca because of her weak transport. When she reached, there was no rich children left. She stayed there for a while when the Prophet's grandfather, Abdul Muttalib Radiatala and who approached her. He asked, I have a grandson, but he is an orphan. Will you raise him? Halima Sadia went quiet after she heard him. Then she said she would inform him after asking her husband. Abdul Muttalib Radiatala and who left after hearing her answer. Halima Sadia consulted her husband and he advised her that it was better to take the child for fostering rather than being left empty-handed. He assumed they might receive some sort of reward. They were not even slightly aware of the abundance they would receive from raising that child. Halima Sadia Radiatala Anha narrated that when she went to Abdul Matlab Radiatala Anhu's house, she felt a sense of peace. When her gaze fell upon the newborn child, her heart felt restless and felt like cradling him immediately. When she held Prophet Muhammad wasallam in her lap, he was smiling. His face was radiating rays of light, called Noor, and it was a wondrous sight. Halima Saadiya radiyatala anha recounted when they were traveling back to their village with the last messenger, there were some strange occurrences along the way. The transport, which was weak and struggling to walk, suddenly began to run faster. The couple was surprised at the speed of their animal. It was so slow when they were arriving at Abdul Muttalib Radiatala and Hu's place, and now they were traveling quickly to their destination. They were beginning to realize that this was not an ordinary child. He was predestined for greatness. She narrated that since they brought Prophet Muhammad to their home, they had not experienced poverty. Instead, there was a rapid increase in their abundance. They received milk in such quantities that they had to distribute it to the nearby village. Hazrat Halima narrated that Prophet Muhammad never gave her a tough time. He was often lying on the swings, staring at the sky intently. When she would look at him, he smiled and went towards her. Whenever they gazed at the Prophet Muhammad they experienced delight like never before. Seeing a child usually brings joy to most people. Imagine the height of sheer bliss from witnessing Prophet Muhammad Wasallam's childhood. Halima Saadi recounted that when the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam began to grow older, strange events started to occur which scared her. She had a fear of Prophet Muhammad Wasallam being harmed by these circumstances. Once, Prophet Muhammad Wasallam went outside with his foster brothers and sisters to play outside. They were busy playing near the house and out of nowhere, a strange creature appeared and took Prophet Muhammad away to the top of the hill. The foster siblings were very scared and ran to the house. They told Halima Sadia everything. When she and her husband reached the place of the abduction, there sat Prophet Muhammad smiling. One time, Prophet Muhammad Wasallam's foster sister took him outside. They returned after a very long time. After their arrival, Halima Sadia asked, Where did you take my son on such a scorching day? The foster sister replied, Mother, but we didn't feel any scorching sunlight. Wherever I took Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, a group of clouds followed us and provided us shade. Apart from these events, there were many other strange things that happened which scared Halima Sadia. She was afraid for his safety. Due to this reason, she took Prophet Muhammad wasallam back to his mother and told Bibi Amina radiyatala anha about all the peculiar incidents. After informing her, she finally handed him to his beloved mother. From then onwards, Holy Prophet wasallam had spent his life under the compassionate shadow of his mother and grandfather. Dear children, our Prophet Muhammad was only six years old when his mother decided to take him on a journey. They planned to pay respects to his father's gravesite 
and also visit Prophet Muhammad Wasallam's maternal relatives in Medina. They stayed in Medina for over a month. On the journey, their family servant, Umm Ayman, accompanied the mother and son. When they were returning to Mecca, Bibi Amna radiyatala anha got severely ill in the, mess in the village called Al Abwa. As her condition was critical, she unfortunately passed away. These moments weighed extremely heavily on Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. His eyes were streaming with tears as he realized the protective shade of his noble mother was no more. Friends, our holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was now left completely alone. How would a child without the affectionate care of his parents possibly feel? What would be his condition? Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was facing difficult circumstances which would shatter any human's heart. However, our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was quite courageous since childhood. Bibi Amina radiyatala anha was buried at Al Abwa, and Umm Ayman took Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam back with her safely to Mecca. He was then under the guardianship of his grandfather, Abdul Mutlib radiyatala anhu. After his grandfather passed away, his paternal uncle, Abu Talib, brought him up. During the early years of prophethood, whenever Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam remembered his mother, his eyes would be in tears. He never lost hope in his entire life and always treated others with kindness. Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam didn't like to share his grievances with others. Instead, he would often try to reduce other people's suffering. His unwavering strength and compassion were the reasons Allah Almighty provided him with ease in the most difficult trials and troubles. Therefore, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam achieved success in all spheres of his life. Dear children, Allah has provided a bounty of His mercy in our lives. There are so many infinite blessings that we can't even possibly count. We have to try and adopt goodness in our ways despite our lives and circumstances. Hence, our efforts would make us worthy of His numerous blessings. A person only has to persist and be hopeful. Allah Almighty will make the rest of the path easier.